Welcome once again. Right now we're on Hebrews chapter 5. We're going to be talking more about the character of Jesus and about Melchizedek and about righteousness. For every high priest being taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. The high priest can deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray because he himself is is also surrounded with weakness. Because of this, he must offer sacrifices for sins for the people as well as for himself. Nobody takes this honor on himself, but he is called by God, just like Aaron was. So also, Christ didn't glorify himself to be made a high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And that is found in Psalm 2, 7. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And that is found in Psalm 110, verse 4. This reference to Melchizedek refers to the Melchizedek in Abraham's day when Abraham met Melchizedek. Now, just as a side note, the name Melchizedek actually has two parts to it, Melchi and Sedek. Melchi means king of, and Sedek, righteousness. So Melchizedek is actually the king of righteousness. Verse 7, he, speaking of Jesus, in the days of his flesh, in other words, when he walked on this earth in the flesh, having offered up prayers and petitions with strong crying and tears to him, that is God the Father, who was able to save him from death and having been heard for his godly fear. This is an allusion to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane just before he was arrested, before he was crucified. Remember, it says that he prayed earnestly. So much so, it says that his sweat became like drops of blood. He was under great stress. But think about it for a second here. If Jesus prayed with crying and petitions, very strong crying, I mean, how much more should we be praying? If Jesus prayed like that, how much more should we be? And also it says that Jesus was heard of God the Father because of his godly fear. Again, if Jesus needed that godly fear to be heard from the Father, how much more we? We should be praying that the fear of God comes back to the church as it was in the New Testament. Verse 8 Though he was a son, yet learned obedience. Isn't that something? He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Wow. I mean, Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Again, if Jesus needs to learn this obedience through suffering, how much more do we need to learn? Now, don't forget that the word humility in the original Hebrew, the root word of that means to be afflicted. And don't forget, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, Paul said that Jesus humbled himself unto obedience. So there's this connection between humility and obedience, between suffering, affliction, and humility, and obedience. Verse 9, in context, speaking of Jesus, having been made perfect... He became to all of those who obey him the author of eternal salvation, named by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Notice here it says that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. In other words, he is a savior, not to all, period, but to all of those who who obey him. God named him a high priest after the order of the king of righteousness. The king of righteousness. How many people today, they claim to follow Jesus, they claim to believe in Jesus, they claim to love Jesus, but their life is far from righteousness. How does that jive? Verse 11, about him we have many words to say and hard to interpret, seeing you have become dull of hearing. For although by this time you should be teachers, you again need to have someone teach you the rudiments of the first principles of the revelations of God. 
you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is not experienced in the word of righteousness. Think about that for a second. Are you experienced experienced in the word of righteousness? For everyone who lives on milk is not experienced in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food is for those who are full grown, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. So in other words, you can't really even discern between good and evil. You don't even know what's right and wrong unless you are experienced in the word of righteousness. You have to be mature in the word of righteousness. Now that is somewhat of a concerning thought, seeing that a lot of lawmakers in the world today are not only immature in the scriptures, a lot of them don't even know the scriptures. So if you are living in a democratic country, it's very, very important to vote for the politician who most lines up with the scriptures. The chances of finding somebody who really aligns with the scriptures are pretty slim, but at least vote for the lesser of all of the evils. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. I mean, get into the scriptures. Pray with all of your heart. Seek him. Seek his will, not your will. Forget about your feelings. It's time to die to self. Seek him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will surprise you. He will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.